8.2 exponential decay is what we are talking about now. Exponential decay. So, when we are taking a look at this, we have exponential decay functions. So let's take a look at the exponential decay function here. Um, it looks exactly like the exponential um, growth function. Okay, They look the same. You have an A and you have a B and you still have a variable to the X, except there's one difference that I want you to keep in mind. A still needs to be greater than zero, right? Still needs to be greater than zero there. However, B is a fraction. That's basically what that's saying. It's in between zero and one. The key I want you to keep in mind when you are doing this stuff is that the decay, it is a decay function, an exponential decay function, if b is a fraction. So if b is a fraction, that's when you know you have an exponential decay function. So in example one, all I want you to do is decide for me, is that exponential growth or decay? Okay, well, according to what I just stated, we're mainly concerned with this. Is this a fraction that is between 0 and 1, right? Is it a fraction that is between 0 and 1? The correct answer is yes. Since it is a fraction between 0 and 1, that means it is a dk. That is an exponential dk function. On the next one, this is a fraction, right? 3 over 2 is a fraction. However, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half, meaning it might be a fraction, but it's a fraction greater than 1. So because it's a fraction that's greater than 1, it isn't decay anymore. Remember, it's stated it needs to be in between 0 and 1, and this is 1.5, which means it's not in between 0 and 1. So this is a fraction, but it's not between 0 and 1, meaning it's actually a growth function. And down here we have a negative x, right? So since that's a negative x, we want to know, is that growth or decay? And that is decay. And the reason why it's decay is we'll end up flipping that around so that it's actually a one-third, all right? Because remember, you can't have a negative exponent, correct? Since you can't have a negative exponent, that means we would have to flip it to the bottom, so it would be one over three uh, and all of that to the x. Because that's negative, we flip it to make it a fraction. So keep that in mind, that is now a fraction that is in between 0 and 1, which is why it's decay. So when you go to graph these, once again, once you use your graphing calculator, so go to y equals, once you type in a 3, then times, then a parentheses, then 1 divided by 4, then n parentheses, then a caret sign, and then the x, and remember the x is right beside the alpha, and press graph and let's see what we get. And what you notice is the graph kind of starts up this side and goes down, right? So before the graph started low and they went high, they were growing from left to right. Now the graphs are decreasing from left to right, right? Now they're going down, they're decaying, okay? So go to second graph so we can see a look at our table. And at negative 2, when I plug that in, I get a 48. Well, of course I can't graph negative 2, 48. That won't even fit on my graph. So let's move on to negative 1. Negative 1, 12. Well, that's getting a little better, right? Negative 1, 12 might be somewhere up here, but it's a little better for us. Um, 0, 3, when I plug that in, 1 and 0.75, which is 3 fourths. And when I plug in a 2, I get 0.1875, which is roughly 3 sixteenths. So when I go to plot these points, I can't plot that, but I can try with uh, negative 1, 12. So I just put that dot way up there. Then the next one is 0, 3, which means I go over nothing and up 3. The next one is I go over 1 and up 0.75, which is roughly there. And the following one is I go over 2 and up just a little bit, uh, 0.18, so about there. And I connect them with a line. Just like we discussed before in the last section, there are asymptotes. And what is the asymptote here? Where does this line get really close to and never touch? Well, it gets really, really close to y equals 0, right? And like I told you before, it's whatever number is hanging out here at the end. That's what the asymptote is. And notice how there is no number hanging out here. Since there is no number, the asymptote for this problem is at 0, at y equals 0. So let's take a look at another one for example too. What I want you now to do is go to y equals and press clear. So let's clear all that away. The negative button, then a 5, then times, then a parentheses, 2 divided by 3, n parentheses, a caret sign, and an x, which is right beside the alpha, and press graph. 
Now what you notice is that it starts down here and it's going up. Okay? And what I want you to keep in mind is the reason why it starts down there is because it is negative. Okay? So I'm going to go to plot these points, go to second graph so we can see a list of our points. And at negative 2, it's negative 11.25, which is roughly negative 45 over 4. Negative 1 is negative 0.75, which is negative 15 over 2. When you plug in 0, you end up getting negative 5. When you plug in a 1, you end up getting negative 3.333, or negative 10 over 3. When you plug in 2, you end up getting negative 2.2222, which is a roughly negative 20 over 9. So when we go to graph this, negative 2 means I go over negative 2 and I go down about 11.25 is what that roughly is, which isn't on the graph. So I'm going to go over to negative 1, and negative 15 over 2 is negative 7.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.5 is roughly there. And over nothing and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half, which is right here, that is... Um, Oh, sorry, it's just actually a5, not 5.5, so that is right there. Um, then I go over 1 and down 1, 2, 3 and a third, which is roughly there. Um, I go over 2 and I go down negative 1, 2.2, 2, um, which is right there. And I believe that is it. So we draw the line, connect the points, and the line's supposed to keep going on up until it gets to um, 0, minus just didn't uh, go up as sharp and go up right away. So the line here is supposed to go the entire way um, up to zero. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're looking at this problem. The line just kind of, I don't know what happened there, kind of drug and got a little sharp. All right, so when we come back here, I will uh, try to finish up this uh, section um, with the examples uh, three through the end. Uh, we have another graph here to graph, and afterwards um, we will uh, get to the decay factor and figure out what that is.